Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I want to talk about another divisive topic. This is something that I see argued about on every art forum. So today I'm going to talk about whether it's still real art when you work from photographs. So as a commissioned artist who works from photographs regularly, I'm obviously going to defend it. But I would like to tell you why I sometimes enjoy working from photographs, perhaps how to do it better, and also trace the use of photographs back through art history. So if you've ever felt under attack from other artists because of your methods of working, then maybe this video is for you. I hope that you enjoy watching. If you do, please do help me out by hitting the subscribe button here on YouTube. Also leave me some feedback. Have you experienced some negative comments about working from photographs? As well as that, you can check me out over on Patreon for all of my full length tutorials, mostly aimed at learning to paint in pastel. But for now, I hope you enjoy this. So let's first of all take a brief look at the history of the use of photographs to create art. We can date this right back to before the camera as we know it was even invented. It's widely accepted by art historians that the camera obscura was in use in a lot of art many centuries ago. There's actually a fascinating documentary by David Hockney tracing the use of camera obscura back through the ages and it's a real eye-opener if you believe that many of the great masters only ever used imagination or painting from life. As it turns out, we artists have been using the tricks and the tools of our time for many centuries. And judging by the fact that much of this art is on display in our prestigious art galleries and museums, I think it's still classed as real art, even if they used a camera obscura. But I'll add a link to that documentary in my description below, as it was a really good watch. But even fast forward a bit to when the actual camera was invented. Its appearance actually solved one of the greatest mysteries regarding how a horse's legs look when it's running. Something that most artists painted inaccurately until the camera created the stills to prove it. Should we have continued to paint horses inaccurately? Or was it wrong to use those photo references to create more realistic paintings? Not to mention that many of the Impressionist artists, known for their plein air skills, also used photographs. So from day one of the camera's existence, we artists have made use of it. I'll add a link here actually to another video that I've made all about painting reality as it touches on very similar themes and shows many, many examples of great artists using photo reference. So where does this criticism of painting from photographs actually come from? I think a lot of people consider it cheating or painting by numbers or copying, copying. Now there's a word that some people like to use as an insult, but am I not simply copying what my eyes see in front of me when I'm painting from life? Are we not often copying as artists? Of course we enhance it and we show it through our eyes. We make the marks to replicate or express something the way we uniquely see it. And that is the main reason that I see validity in working from photo reference. Because if you give 10 artists the exact same photo reference to work from, each piece of work will turn out very different. We all see uniquely, and whether the photo reference feeds us the information or not, that brain to hand communication will result in something different from each artist. But I'm certainly not saying to ignore plein air or painting or drawing from life. Those things will actually improve your skills more than anything else. Is it harder to work from life? Of course. But does that make working from a photograph pointless? Not in my opinion, they're just different. Most of my work is pet portraiture. And this is one area that I'm very happy to use photographs for. 
One, it means that I don't have to coerce an animal into sitting still for me. Have you ever tried to photograph a cat? Sometimes a couple of seconds is too long to ask for. And two, it means I can accept commissions of animals from all over the world. That being said, it's not impossible to work from life on this type of commission, and I do know some artists who do. But my style takes a little longer, and to produce realistic detail, working from photographs just makes more sense for me. I would, however, love if more of my people portraits could be done from life. I do think it really helps to meet a person, see them from different angles and in action, and also get some kind of connection with them to really capture them. But even at that, sometimes it's not logistically possible for me, and a good photo session can work just as well for me to capture a likeness. But don't be fooled into thinking that working from photographs is easy. There's a considerable amount of skill to be able to bring a successful painting out of that 2D image. As an example of my approach to it, this piece here was created from this photograph. Now I didn't have to change very much, did I? But still the client thought it better to have a painting to hang on their wall than to simply blow the photograph up and frame it. When I get a photograph like this, I start to look for the ways that I can improve it. I look for extra colours that I can bring out. I might crop it or reposition the main subject. I might blur backgrounds to add more depth. And in this case, you can see that I added much more greenery around the dog, adding more to the, the bare grass that was actually in the photograph, and thus making more use of those lovely complementary greens and reds in this piece. I'm not a human printer. I don't just copy. I enhance and I put it on the paper through my lenses, not just the camera's lens. So why would that be less of an art than painting from life or from imagination? As there are times that using photographs, I can create a scene which never existed. So to a certain extent, there is sometimes use of my imagination to fill in the gaps and make something believably real. With my landscape paintings, I am often too using photo references. I'm not the best photographer, but the ability to take a snapshot that I can later spend ages working on in my studio is very appealing to me. In this case, again, I'm cropping and using my imagination a lot to make a painting closer to the reality of being there than even the photograph. Could I have gone to this harbour and worked from life many days in a row? Of course. But I think it would have been much more difficult and I'm not sure that I would have got to the finished painting that I did using my photo references. For some people, part of the joy of painting a landscape is actually being in the landscape while you're painting it, and I can totally understand that too. But for me and the detail that I enjoy working in, photo reference gives me the ability to work in my cosy studio and spend as long as I want without that light changing while you're working on it. But again, I will say that painting and drawing from life have great benefits, and I've done much of this in my time as an artist, especially back when I was a student, and it really did excel my drawing and painting skills. But there is a big part of me as an artist that loves the challenge of bringing life into that 2D photograph in front of me. Then there are also times that a client will give me a photo reference to work from, and I really don't want to change anything about it. Maybe it's the absolute perfect image already. No need to crop it, nothing. In this case, maybe the only thing making my artwork different from the photograph are the colors that I've chosen to enhance and my marks when you're up close to the painting. To me, that's still valid as art because of the time and the skill that went into creating it. If you choose to see that as more of a craft, done as art, then what does it really matter? It's so difficult to try and pigeonhole everyone into the same category in art as there are just so many methods to get to a final outcome. Now, on the other side of things, I do see a bit of a problem if you're only ever working from other people's photographs. If you never change anything about the photograph and you're never behind the lens choosing the lighting and composing the image, 
then there is a case to be made that you're missing a vital ingredient to be able to call your artwork original. After all, composition plays a huge part in the success of a painting. So if you never compose your own image from the start, it does become more difficult to call it original. So in my opinion, while I'm happy to use client photo references for my commissioned work, I do always think that it's better if you, the artist, can go and take the reference photos yourself. But honestly, the scope that photo reference gives me as an artist is endless, rather than limiting as some suggest. So, now this is almost entirely another topic, but while we're already on this path, if you're using a photo reference for your art, is it okay to trace it or to project it? That's another topic that is highly debated on many art forums. Personally, I use a grid a lot of the time when I'm sketching out my commissioned pieces as that helps to speed me up. But I'm also not against tracing or projecting as I understand that time is money to a working artist. I mean, look back to the camera obscura. That is just an early projector. So were those masters cheating? I like the grid method though, as it helps me speed up, but I still keep a hand in my drawing skills. And when I do have more time, I love to freehand sketch. And a lot of my demos here on YouTube are all done freehand. So it's hard to really tell the difference because I've learned to freehand pretty accurately over the years. And I just don't think that using a tool now to speed things up is cheating. Because whether you trace or not, you'll struggle to get a realistic outcome if you can't draw at all. When I give a workshop, I prepare an outline on some paper for all of the students to work on a quick paint along demo to get us warmed up. At the end of this, no two are alike. So if tracing was cheating, they would all just turn out like the photo. But we inevitably add our own mark or personality to the piece. So honestly, I just don't think that there is a right or a wrong, or a better or a worse. Painting from life and drawing freehand are both worth practicing and skills that any artist would want. But honestly, I'm just a bit tired of some people and their many rules regarding art. Someone else's opinion is not a rule that the rest of us have to follow. So if you're doubting anything that you're doing as an artist, why don't you try asking yourself these two questions. Have wonderfully amazing artists done this before in the past? And is there a market for it now? And if you can answer yes to either of those, then carry on. I hope that this has been helpful. This is of course just my opinion, so you can choose to dislike it or disagree. But if you've enjoyed this, then I would love for you to leave me some feedback hit that subscribe button and go and check out my huge library of videos both here and on Patreon. But thanks very much for watching and until next time, whether you paint from life or from photographs, happy pastling.